Blog Talk Radio. Welcome to St. Petersburg Global Ministries, an apostolic organization ready to serve God and His people. To learn more about us, just go to our website at www.stpetersburgglobalministries.org. Now, stay tuned while we connect you. And good afternoon and welcome to St. Petersburg Global Ministries as well as our Women Empowerment segment for um, this afternoon. And of course, this topic we're going to be talking about this afternoon is Before the Altar. Now, a lot of times we are in relationships. A lot of times we're in situations where we want to test the waters first before we get married and we want to stay together. We want to shack. We want to live together. We want to see what the person is all about. But even while you're doing that, you need to ask questions. You need to observe some things. Uh, as to what you're getting now is what you're going to get when you get to the altar. It's not going to change. So that's the reason why we're coming in with some tools and resources in order to be able to help you to understand a little bit more as to what you can be doing for your relationship in order to prepare for uh, marriage or preparing for, uh, you know, the altar. Even, uh, you know, myself, um, I think we kind of did a little bottleneck at first we kind of lived together a little bit and then we got married i think about um i want to say about two years 80 you know it's about two years later then we got married and what have you and we've been been together uh you know perhaps me like 30, 32 33 years and so with that being said of course i did not um you know we came from a great um Um, clergy, but, um, you know, a lot of times certain religions, certain denominations, certain backgrounds do not teach, uh, you know, um, internal things that we need to know for, um, you know, success of life. Sometimes people just teach from the scriptures, teach from the Bible, and, you know, individuals may go to different programs and what have you of the church, but they do not nurture. They do not know how to nurture. So this leader did not know how to nurture at the time, not saying he he was a bad leader or a bad pastor, he just did not know how to um, nurture individuals and counsel them. You know, sometimes we have to get down to the meat and potatoes. So I kind of went in there and we jumped into some things, but I did not get all of the full understanding of meat and potatoes of a relationship and a marriage. So we kind of filtered through some things and kind of went as we go. I mean, w- yeah, kind of went along and you know, and when as we go, we go as we went. So anyway, and so, you know, we did not learn, um, you know, each other. We had to learn each other later. So we don't do that. We learn each other before, before we get to um, the altar and what have you. And so there are scriptures to be able to also um, correct some of the things that we um, should be doing before we go to the altar and what have you. And then you sit down and, you you know, it's a, it's a big step, you know, getting married um, or even living with a person, wanting to move in with a person. I, I, I think I can remember once I found out that I was going to move, um, I went in at back back then. This has been some years ago, thirty something years ago. I went in and I started to, um, you know, putting in some layaway stuff. You know, <laughs> I, I did. I was it was like kitchen stuff, uh, uh, bathroom stuff, bedroom stuff, sheets. I was putting. I just had so many stacks of things. So when I got ready to move out, we had everything basically that we needed, the in- essentials that we needed to be able to um, make this work. And so um, this just came from some wisdom that I had learned even with uh, uh, from my grandparents and what have you. You know, you always put you something back. And so that's what I did. I went in there and started putting some things back. And even with that, uh, you know, um, I began to prepare for some things. So we have to sit down. We have to talk about financial um, things, you know, the income, who's going to, you know, where the income is going to be coming from, who's going to be paying what. You have to sit down and you have to be able to, um, you know, um, get a generalization as to um, where um, the relationship is going, um, how you're going to prepare for the relationship, 
what is going to be done. You know, when we were coming up, you know, just you know, everybody's different, and a lot of people say, well, today it takes two jobs, two people to work a job. Not really, not just necessary. If he, if a, if a man prepares himself before he goes to the altar, he will make sure that he has all that he need in order to um, uh, to be able to make certain things work in a relationship. So um, our grandmother, she worked, but it was like domestic work. It was, you know, maybe going to houses or something like that three or four days out of a week and ironing and perhaps dusting and, and vacuuming, and it was just very, very light things. He never did put any harsh stipulations upon our grandmother and forced her to be able to do anything. You know, a man should be able to stand up on his feet where he's taking care most of the, of the majority of the bills. There is no such thing as 50-50. Whoever said that, that's just because a person, the, perhaps maybe the male, is a little bit lazy and he don't want to do what he's supposed to be doing as a man, so he's going to sit there and force the wife to go in and help him to be able to drag the load. So even though that has been some years ago, I feel that if a man gets before God and talks to God and tell him, look, this is what I want for my wife. My wife can be able to do something online where she can be able to stay at home with the children and things like that. I feel that um, you can be able to bless me with an income where she can be able to have free freedom around the home. You know, what she can be able to do. See, because a lot of times we blame everything on the school system, whether it's the school's the reason why the children are not, uh, you know, where they're supposed to be. And sometimes we blame everything on the principal. We blame, Everything is somebody else's fault. It's the parents' fault, okay, because the parents did not sit down and, and, and talk about things, work it out before they went to the altar or before they got into a relationship or decided to live together. And that is the problem because if a woman is at work and the husband is at work and the children, uh, you know, having to sit at home with one and the other one, the the other uh, uh, parent may be on the telephone or they may be doing something else. Well, the child, the child is going to lack in something. So it's, it's everything is not the fault on the child. I mean, on the school system, it's your responsibility to teach your own children. So that's the reason why we plan. We plan for. A relationship we plan, and I know you know everybody does not do this. This this um, this PowerPoint may just be for those who are in a relationship, or maybe um, you know <clears throat> that are planning to get married and what have you. Because sometimes people may not see it that way. That perhaps maybe have been married for years and years, they may not see it that way. You know, some people were taught and trained and raised on a different type of level. And so that's another thing that, uh, you know, of course, we're going to be discussing too. So first of all, we want to talk about your finances. Your finances have to be in order. So let's go and see what the scripture has to say about our finances, okay? Let's go and see what the scripture, we're going to go to Third John, okay? Because everything that we go through in life, people, it's always going to be found in the Word of God. It's there. If you're going, if you got issues with anger, it's there. If you going through issues where, um, you know, it may be, uh, you know, some infidelities in your relationship or your marriage, that's in the Bible and things. You you can find so many individuals that had so many infidelities in the Old Testament, we cannot even count them on on the finger. Okay, so we're going to go to Third John. Chapter 2, and it says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. So God wants us to be happy. You know, he wants us to be able to plan. He wants us to make sure that we have everything. You know, everything is not going to just be perfect and PG keen all the time. But once you plan for certain things, you know, it kind of, um, you know, um, releases a lot of stress. And we want to go, it's a, it's a, it's a, um, Scripture in the book of Luke where it talks about a man um, before he sits down and builds a house, he first, he first he sits down, he counts the cost up first, okay, something that we don't like to do. We, you know, we like to get into a lot of things, and we don't like to sit down and, and, uh, and uh, um, 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 do anything. We just like to sit there, and we like to just run and jump into debt and a whole lot of things, but that's a, that's the main um, one of the main issues that need to be considered, and that is um, your finances. Where is the money going to come in? 
uh, from first. Okay, so this is Luke. This is coming out of the King James Version Bible, Luke chapter 14, and we're coming from verse 20, uh, 27 and 28. And whosoever doeth not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. 28, for which of you intending to build a tower sitteth not down first and counteth the cause whether he have sufficient uh, to finish it. So if that means that you're not going to go out there and be planning to do something and you do not have um, the f- sufficient funds to be able to complete what it is, the project that you have agreed upon. So you have to sit down, you have to count the calls up, you have to uh, be able to plan for things and what have you. You don't want to be always in there asking your parents for things or you don't want to start asking her parents for things or his parents or, you know, go ask your mama, can you give me this? Or go ask your daddy, can you give me this? You want to start that. That's your responsibility. You're supposed to sit there and, t- and count all of these things up first before you um, – before you get into settling down into a relationship, okay? So now this ministry does not condone individuals living together before they get married. But so to the fact that if someone is listening and they are not married, you this deal can be able to help you, okay? It's a difference. We don't condone um, are living together, but if these tools can be able to help you, um, you know, before you get married, then this um, 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 segment is also for you as well, okay? We don't want to be judgmental and uh, cast people away or what have you just because the next person is indifferent from someone else. We don't want to do that because God can talk to all of us, whether we are just or unjust or whether we may be doing the right thing or we may not be doing the right thing, okay? And so that's what we want to talk about first. We want to talk and we want we, – you should be – that's what we – you know, wanted to uh, bring out the first element is making sure that you have your finances in order. And that's how we can live successful and prosperous is when we have our financial portfolio in line. Did you have your financial portfolio in line? Well, no, I didn't. I did not have it in line, but you best better believe that I had some of it, some of the things that I knew that I was going to need, I had them in line. Like, you know, even we were expecting a child at the time, I made sure that I went in there and I uh, kept racking up uh, 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 with um, uh, a Walmart with diapers and, and bottles and and um, I was buying up uh, uh, bills. I was buying up a whole lot of stuff. I know for the first six to seven months, I did not have to go back to Walmart basically for anything because I think at the with the first one, I think I had baby showers, and then I had put up some things as well. And then on the second child that we had together and what have you, I uh, had a baby shower as well. I think I had about two or three baby showers on the second son that I um, had birthed. And so I always tried to make sure that I planned ahead. So there were some things that I planned ahead. Financially, eh, it didn't go so well, okay? But, you know, we learn from, like I said, we will learn from our mistakes, and so that's the reason why we are doing this segment. Also, you can be able to check out our book that's on Amazon. It's an e-book called um, 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 Before the Altar, and I think it's like probably like a dollar ninety nine or something like that. It's not that expensive, and you can get some more tools and nuggets from there as well. So finances is the first thing we want to do, and then, well, regardless of whether you're going to church or not, it's still best to pray. Pray about some things before you get into it, before you make major decisions. Finances is a major decision. Living together, that's a major step, and also such as, and so is marriage. Those are major steps. So you have to sit down, you have to pray about it. Is this the right one? Is this the way I want to be? Do I have enough um, financial support to be able to support all of us? You know, sometimes individuals can, you know, crash, their their relationships can crumble due to the finances of not being the way that it should be. And so sometimes it can cause the relationship to go sour simply because of the household is being, in, you know, it's in a lack, a, a state of lack. And so we don't want um those things to happen. You know, I love to hear when people get married. I love to hear when people have successful successful relationships, even though there may be some things that go on behind closed doors, and still at the same time, they, the relationship is successful enough um, so that, um, um, you know, it can be have a balanced out type of feel to it, okay? 
So the second thing um, that we want to be able to um, um, share with you, even with that, is that, you know, a lot of times when people are coming from two different um um, um, households and what have you. Sometimes individuals have soul ties, they have soul ties, family ties, and that's something that you want to get um, uh, clear and understood from the beginning. Because see, um, I'm gonna we're gonna go to the book of Genesis, chapter two, and we're gonna tell you. And it's it's also in chapter two. It's also Matthew chapter 19. I think Mark uh, talks about it, and it's also another uh, scripture in the book of Peter. You'll have to get your concordance. So you can be able to um, follow up on that. But I'm going to read you the one from um, the book of Genesis. And so this is what is expected. And even though, well, I don't go to church, but you still can be able to live by these principles. This, that's not important at, at this point, whether you go to church or not. So we're going we're gonna to go over here. And this is where God talks to um this is where God talks to Adam and Eve in regards to after he had created Eve and stuff. I know I'm in the right book. I'm trying to see. I think it's um, it's after Eve was born, um, after God had created, uh, created uh, Eve, and then after that, God went in there and he blessed them. So I said it was 2 and 28. Now let's see. Hold on. Here it goes right here. So it's 2 and 24. Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and shall, well, let's back up to 23. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. He shall be called, she shall be called woman because she was taken from, out of man or taken from man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. Okay, so we got we're gonna go to the New Testament because you have some religions that believe that well you know that's 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 went on back in the Old Testament and we don't study out out of the New Testament so let's go to the New Testament you know you got some for people and stuff they they, they Bible scholars Mm-mm. and so it says uh, uh, Matthew it's, I'm not even on the right page okay Matthew chapter 19 King James Version Bible verse five. It says, and said, for this cause shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife, and they twain, they twain which, is, which means two, shall be one flesh. So that means that um, the husband is one as the wife, and then the husband will not allow anything to come in and to attack or try to manipulate the relationship. And the wife as well, she will be so uh, strong as protecting her household, but she will not allow anything to be able to come in and to be able to attack that. Now, there's a story in the book of Genesis where, um, and we're going to talk about soul ties, where um, um, Laban was a man that had two daughters, Leah and Rachel, and 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 so of course you know the some of you may know the story of how um, Rachel um, may have uh, um, was the one that Jacob or Israel his name was uh, changed to Israel later where Jacob um, had you know wanted and desired Rachel and after that Laban the father which was Leo and, and Rachel's father he came out oh well you know uh, you know he he put the wrong woman in there I mean he put the wrong daughter in there to lie with Jacob and what have you so when he got up to, uh, perhaps maybe the next day and she took her veil off well it was the wrong sister so the father-in-law went in there Laban and said okay well you know uh, you did that and so you're going to have to work for me for seven years. But if you want Rachel, you're going to have to work for me seven more years, okay? And he did everything he could. He kept telling Jacob, spend the night, stay another night. This is after the 14 years had been up. Spend another night and stuff. Spend another night. He did not want to depart with <coughs> Jacob, excuse me, for two reasons. One was because... Um, it's the 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 whole entire time while Jacob was there, um, all of his cattle prospered. Laban's, Laban's cattle prospered. Also, there were some soul ties that was going on. Some family ties. He didn't want to give up his children. He did not want them to leave. 
So what happened was Jacob had got so tired of him when it was time for them to go the next day, and the father-in-law went in there and asked him, oh, stay another night. Jacob stayed another night. And when the next night came and stuff, oh, we're going to leave me and my children and my wives and stuff and, and the cattle that I have um, – born, we're going to get up and we're going to stay another night. He just kept on and then eventually he got tired, confronted his father-in-law Laban and told him, hey, look, turn me a loose. Stop this. Turn me a loose. You don't want to, you know, turn away from your daughters. You don't want your daughters to leave the home. So Jacob actually slipped away from them. They got up by night, and all of them got up and packed their bags and ran and slipped away. And, of course, that made Laban angry. But Laban was the one that had the issue. He had the soul ties with his daughters. He didn't want his daughters to be able to leave the home. And so that's something else that we have to talk about before we get into relationships, especially if we expect the relationship to go beyond just you know, living together, if you this is something that you desire to do with your spouse, and you say, hey, I want to do this and I want to do that and what have you, and this is something that you desire to do with your spouse um, is to, you know, um, um, get married or what have you, you have to make sure that there are no soul ties between your spouse and the spouse and your husband, and the husband has to make sure that there are no soul ties with the wife. There's no such thing as no, this is my, uh, this is daddy's girl, and this is mama's boy, and stuff like that. All of that stuff is going to have to be um, rectified before the altar, simply because of the fact it's going to cause conflict. Because once the 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 once the the relationship has mended, and now the, the the situation is, one you know, sometimes when you have soul ties, the parents will get in there and they will start to, you know, still taking taking over, taking control, thinking they're still in control, even though you're in a, a full-blown relationship, they'll come in and they'll take over because they think that they're still, you know, someone has still put them in um, authority because no one has cut the ties, Okay. And that's something that you do not want. For for the life of me, I mean, everybody's different, and I understand everybody else's views. I understand everybody else's opinions and what have you. But for the life of me, I have never, ever seen to the fact as to why people would want to live with their in-laws. I've never heard anything like that before. I mean, you know, that's I just didn't see that coming up. I wasn't... You know, I didn't I didn't see a whole lot of in law type of stuff, but today you see individuals that have still have soul ties with their children and they do not want to um to um they do not want to leave their children and sometimes it's the children that do not want to leave. And I don't understand for the life of me how people can be able to get along with their parents in a house well, you know, it, it may be some things that are intimate that may be occurring. You wouldn't want the parent to be sitting in the next room listening to everything that's going on. I just don't understand that. I mean, just like I said, each is to their own. Everybody is different. There is no way that I'm buying a house and buying it for no in-law suite, no none of it. No, 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 no. And so that's the reason why you have to be careful that you're not so um, together and entwined with each other where you don't know how to wiggle out of stuff, out of family ties, soul ties. You see what I'm saying? You have to you have to know how to, to, to put up barriers and you have to know how to put up um uh, walls and what have you and things like that. I mean you know, they wouldn't want you to sit there and perhaps maybe invade on them or invade. I, th- I would think it would be a privacy issue. But like I said, I'm open to anybody's opinions or what have you. You know, everybody's entitled to their own. <laughs> but um, that's just my opinion of that. I just, uh, you know, sometimes soul ties can cause a lot of problems when people are still um, joined, connected to their um to their parents, and they're, they're supposed to be connected. I just read you the scripture, uh, uh, Genesis 2 and 24 and Matthew 19 and 5. I just read you the scripture where God forbids for us to have those type of ties. The ties are between the husband and wife once they get married at the altar, okay? And so those are just some things that, that um, uh, could be considered and should be considered when you are um, um, in a relationship um, you should be uh, making sure that you're watchful of that, even if you have um, um, 
which is going to be our next discussion that we're going to, um, you know, talk about when it's a blended family and you have blended families where, um, you know, some of them may bring other children to the relationship that was already, you know, born before the relationship uh, was started and what have you. All of that needs to be ironed out as well before the altar. So take, for example, if you are in a relationship and then you're going to, uh, Bob gets married to Susie, and so Susie has children, and, you know, we see this all the time. Susie has children, but, you know, Bob has a conflict with Susie's children's father because he don't want him coming over or he don't want this to be going on and what have you. And see, that's because no one has sat, sat down and made a um, a discussion about it. I was talking to this individual. This has been some years ago. And so I noticed um, and uh, that, um, you know, he has a child and, and things like that. And just because people have children by, by outside individuals, the relationship does not give those parental, um, parental parents to continue to, to continue to talk just every day. That's just, you know. You can't do that. That's going to eventually cause conflict. And I always wondered, I said, now when you get in the vehicle and stuff, you and this lady, perhaps y'all, um, you know, resolved, uh, dissolved, dissolved your relationship. And so now she's remarried and, or well, she's married and he's married. They were never married, as, as but they born a child together. But when we would always get to work and, and our job um, duties were on the outside of the institution, he would always be on the phone talking to him. I, I, was, I, I never did ask him because it wasn't any of my uh, place to do that. Uh, but I always wondered, I'm like, now, you all couldn't get to get along together, so y'all, you married and she married somebody else, so um, you always talking to her all the time. You know, we got a child together. That's not a, an excuse for a husband to be able to pick up the phone and be able to talk and discuss things about your child just all times of the day and all times of the week. So, you know, you have to set some boundaries. You have to set some boundaries, especially with blended families. You you sit down and you talk uh, to your to your um, to the child and let them know, you know, um, we're going to get married. This is not your father or this is not going to be your mother. And I feel that once you address things from the beginning, I think children can be able to accept it a little bit better, especially even if it's by uh, uh, a multiracial type of relationships and stuff like that. You really need to sit down and be able to um, 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 talk and have a discussion you don't have to ask them anything because the relationship is not between you and your child. It's between you and your mate. But you can be able to be open to them so they can be able to come to you to see if they have anything or comments that they would like to say or any opinions. That don't mean that they have to change just because your child gives you the opinion. But I think that discussion is very important when you're dealing with blended families, stepchildren, stepmothers, stepfathers, stepbrothers, and things like that. And, you you know, you have to sit down and make a discussion of it. You don't sit there and allow the relationship to be smothered so to the, smothered to the fact that you fail to do your responsibilities. And then now the child is lost. They don't know what's going on. My daddy no longer lives here and what have you. And so because my daddy don't live here, I don't have to, spit, you know, respect Jim Bob, this new man and what have you. That's because there has been no discussion before the altar. You always want to make sure that you sit down and you dis, uh, you know, you discuss some things, and that's something that I didn't do either. I am G-U-I-L-T-Y. I'm guilty of that because I was young and what have you and things like that. But later on, some things kind of ironed out, <clears throat> and some things were kind of rocky, uh, you know, uh, due to that because sometimes some individuals will feel that they have the right of way you know, to just come over and drop, no, 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 no. So that's the reason why we have to set some boundaries. We sit down and we communicate and we talk, okay? So these are some of the things that, you know, that can uh, be able to save a lot of headache, you know, issues or dilemmas, you know, in the future is when we sit down and we talk and we communicate, okay? So that's the first thing we talked about. We talked, we talked about, um, um, you know, sitting down, 
talking about finances. Number two, the second thing that we talked about before the altar we need to do is about what? We need to we need to uh, uh, sit down and talk about soul ties, about the family. What What is your mother like? You know, I've read some articles and things like that when it came down to soul ties where the mother was so jealous of her daughter-in-law that she would um, she had a key to the house and would walk in on the on on her son and um the daughter-in-law you know in a, a, a intimacy uh, type of phase you know that's you, you don't never let a situation get that far where you 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 can't uh, sit down and tell your mother or your dad. Uh, and you and men don't usually do things like that. That's a, a basically a lot of man's behavior. Usually that's a female's behavior. And so sometimes people are so in love with their children that they don't want the children to um, um, disperse the love to no other woman but just them as the mother. So you have to kind of, you know, watch things like that. I have. I've read a lot of articles in regards to that. As, and I'm t- I'm telling you, it would surprise you as to what you would, you know, what some of the things that were shared where women write today and stuff, they are suffering in their relationships, they're suffering, you know, in their marriages, they can't breathe because of the in-laws are always, that's the reason why I don't understand how people are, are, can be able to uh, purchase a home and add an in-law suite to the house. I mean, I, I don't get that and what have you. You know, there are some boundaries that should be set because if you never cut the ties to your parents, you're giving them the keys to be able to do whatever they want to, whenever they feel like it, and whenever they get ready. And that's something that you don't want. See, because if you want it and if, if that's something that you want, I'm pretty sure that you're agitating your wife. And if it's the wife that's inviting her family because that's what you're doing, you, you well, nobody didn't say anything to me about being a nosy mother-in-law. Well, you know, that's what it does. When you don't say anything, it opens up the door and it invites people in. And so we talked about soul ties. And then, of course, uh, we also talked about, you know, a man leaving the home and what have you. And we have to have all of these things in order, blended families. That's the third topic that we talked about, blended families. These things are very, very important. We got to make sure that we um, are, are are doing these things before? If, if you if well, I, I didn't have time or what have you. I didn't know any better. Well, you probably didn't, just like I didn't. But here's an opportunity. Once you hear something, then you go in and you try to, you know, change it or fix it or pass the message on to someone else that uh, perhaps may be uh, getting married or trying to uh, move together or maybe trying to test the waters before they go to the altar. These are some very important tools and resources that you can be able to grasp uh, before you um, think about going um, to the to the altar or before you uh, start getting into a relationship. So I just wanted to be able to bring those three nuggets to you. We're going to be doing a series about this, and we'll be back on the broadcast in a couple of more Saturdays, and we'll be uh, extending um, um, these uh, marital and relationship series um, to our audience. Okay, and so it is very, very important. This does not have anything to do with, well, you know, I don't go to church. This don't have anything to do with this. This is critical when you are trying to um, make something work and make it be successful. You want it to be successful. And the only way that something can be able to be successful is that you um, – Um, make preparations before you make that big decision. Living together is a big decision. Marriage is a big decision. Taking up responsibilities with uh, with someone else's children that are not yours, that is a huge decision because now you don't open up the door for other individuals. Not saying that you should not engage yourself with relationships just because people have outside children. I say that you, I'm saying that things have to be organized. You have to sit down, you have to discuss, you have to talk about things. You have to talk about them. And so when we talk about things and discuss them and what have you, you still may have some roads that may be bumpy, but once you get mother-in-law and put her in her place before the altar, you won't have to worry about those things later on, okay? The wife does not have any business of trying to correct 
of a husband's mother-in-law. That's the husband's job to to take, step in, put his foot down, and take care of from the beginning. So once if you, you, you straighten it out from the beginning, you won't have no problems with it. Same thing about the finances. You sit down and you know you don't go out there spending up a whole lot of stuff. You know you know you don't especially you don't go out there and get this loan shark type of mentality where you're going to errands and all of these other uh, places where you have to pay about four or five times the difference of a, a furniture uh, layout or what have you or a bedroom. Uh, layout. You want to take your time, spend your, I mean, save your money, save up some things first. You can put some things in the layer where you certainly don't want to be able to uh, be putting something, um, um, purchasing something where you have to pay a lot of interest on it. Now you're introducing yourself to a lot of debt. You're introducing yourself to a lot of debt. So when you do that and, you know, something may come up, you know, I want to have kids and what have you, I can't have them and what have you. And if you do have the children and you in this debt, somebody's going to be frustrated. It's going to be you and it's going to be the wife. Okay, it's going to be the both of you because you, as the man, cannot uh, be able to pull the weight that you need to be able to pull. And the wife is going to be stressed because now she's, with the child, and she's pregnant, and she cannot help in that area. So it's best to be able to sit down and take up, count the costs up first, sit down and talk about some things, and make sure that you have all of your ducks in a row. As I stated, it's not going to be smooth all the time. It's not going to be perfect. But I promise you, when you sit down and talk about things before the altar, you can be able to have a somewhat of a stressful relate stress list. Uh, relationship and a stressless marriage. So we're gonna we're gonna take this back up with you in a couple of more Saturdays, and we're gonna complete this series and then for um um up any upcoming um updates with the series. It will be posted okay on our Facebook page, which is entitled Women of empowerment ministries you can go up under there and it's also going to be on our church page as well so until then you take care of yourselves and take care of each other